dies. Just few words before demonstration. Their main difference is that they penetrate the entire depth of the fabric without affecting the softness of the fabric. And the fabric remains the same to the touch as before dyeing. And that's why they are so good for the multi-layer technique. And at that point they are just perfect. But they need to be steamed and it's a process. I prefer dyes in the powder form. They are much cheaper and they are easy to handle. I just pour the powder in a cup, dilute it with water, making the needed concentration. Unfortunately, I can't give you brand name of my dyes because they were bought in a textile fabric over 30 years ago. And they just gave me those uh, colored powder in a jars with no name. But only thing I can suggest for you is to try to find uh, dyes for silk and wool, which means uh, for fabric of protein origin. And that's what I did preparing for this video. My powder dyes keep well through the years. They haven't lost their properties. And when they dry in the cup, I just add some water and can use them again. My left part, I'm going to use dyes, and here will be paints. As always, I have a palette, water, a porous paper to dry brush, and two kinds of dyes. And the first one is my old dye, and it behaves like a regular ready-made dye, like Dupont or other ready-made dyes. As far as I know, Dupont is the most popular. So I touch the silk with the brush and the dye itself begins to spread. In general, it's very similar to watercolor. You can dilute it with water on the palette or in a cup or a glass and get a lighter tone. As you can see, it fills the silk very evenly. Now I will demonstrate how it behaves on wet silk. I just need to fill it with water. The dye spreads well. You can make a nice gradient. So it was my old dye that was meant for silk and wool. And as I said, for this video I decided to try to find a modern, affordable powder dye. This is what I found at my local art store. And I, as usually, diluted with water exactly the same way. That's left out of the scene, but I did add a little vinegar in there, like the instructions said. Stirring it up again. Uh, clearly, it's too concentrated now, so I pour some of the concentrate into a cup and add some water. And see what a strange thing happens when I use this dye on dry silk. I don't know for what reason it leaves hollows or borders or traces, I don't know how to say it, and I can't get them out with a brush. But if you paint on wet silk, remember this square is wet, it doesn't leave any outlines or borders, so you can freely use these dyes on wet silk. And you also get a beautiful gradient. By the way, this effect is sometimes appropriate, and so we can keep it in mind. Maybe one day you'll need those touches of brush. And now paints. Acrylic, or in other words, uh, water-based, 
it doesn't matter and they cover fabric with a thin film and thus not always but very often they affect the softness of the fabric and can make the fabric more stiff they are fixed to the fabric with an iron which is much easier than steaming they come in liquid paints for silk and non-fluid textile paints for all kinds of fabric. When buying such paints, I never look at the brand, buy only at the color I need. I will start with the liquid Javana silk paint. Uh, on the palette it spreads like a watercolor and on dry silk it behaves like a quality dye. It spreads well on silk, leaving no traces or borders And on the wet silk gets a nice smooth gradient. And now no flow dyes. It's quite thick, but you can see that it dissolves well with water where there was water on the palette. On dry silk it hardly spreads at all, which was expected, but if you take water on the brush it starts to flow quite well. And also doesn't leave any traces. And here is a non-flowing paint from the same manufacturer. And first I paint without water. And now I wet the brush. And you see there are traces of brush strokes. And they don't spread from the water. And why is that? It's a mystery to me. There must be a reason for this, and if you know the answer, please let me know in the comments. And the same paint on wet silk spreads well without leaving brush marks. Therefore, you can get used to any paint, and if it behaves badly on dry silk, you can paint wet silk with it. And the bottom line is that dyes don't affect to the softness of the fabric, but they do need steaming. And that's additional process and additional time. Water-based paints can be easily fixed by iron, but can sometimes make your fabric stiff. By the way, if you are just starting to paint silk, you don't need to buy a wide range of colors, but enough red, yellow and blue as shown in this video.